shady government programs, experiments gone wrong, reality bending phenomena, and people disappearing. The Philadelphia Experiment has everything you need to make a science fiction blockbuster, but some people claimed that it happened. That's right. Well, today we're going to try to figure that out. My name is Joey Contino from the Wobble Video Archive, and currently we're in the Philadelphia Naval Yard to go ahead and prove A, did this experiment take place, and B, did it actually work? Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. As the legend goes, the Philadelphia Experiment was performed by the U.S. Navy in 1943 at the Philadelphia Naval Yard, which briefly went by the alias Project Rainbow, a chipper tone considering the dark side we're about to look at. At this time, the U.S. was just about to head into World War II, and the U.S. Navy was trying to turn the ship USS Eldridge invisible. Kind of how, like, the helicarrier in the Avengers goes incognito. But instead of doing that, the military ship just dematerialized, and then several minutes later, rematerialized. The crew on board apparently suffered long-term side effects, and some of the crazy stories of teleportation were thrown around too. It probably sounds insane, but there were grounds to conduct the experiment. Dr. Franklin Reno applied Einstein's unified field theory, which successfully demonstrated a connection between gravity and electromagnetism. According to the legend, their first test actually did manage to turn the ship almost invisible, leaving behind a wisp of green fog. When it reappeared, the crew complained of severe nausea, and some went insane. With the first attempt gone haywire, the Navy changed their plan from rendering the ship completely invisible to just making it invisible to radar. The equipment was recalibrated as such, and the second test began. But something went wrong. The Eldridge disappeared in a flash of blue light and mysteriously appeared in Norfolk, Virginia, which is over 200 miles away. Those on board SS Andrew Furuseth could see the ship plain as day before them, before it disappeared and returned back to Philadelphia. Some versions of the story say that the vessel had also gone approximately 10 minutes back in time. And when the ship came back, the crew members refused to the bulkheads, suffered mental disorders, and some were uncontrollably phasing in and out of invisibility. It was also suggested that the surviving crew members were brainwashed in forgetting that the experiment ever happened at all. Probably a good thing in this case, who knows what would have happened in the alternative dimension they traveled in when they were invisible. But the story doesn't end there. Yes, after two botch attempts, the Navy decided to abandon the project, but the effects of the experiment have lasted much longer, long enough to have books written and movies made about them. Case in point, Carl Allen was one of the crew members on board the SS Andrew Furuseth, who witnessed the ship's disappearance. He regularly claimed, amongst other things, that he saw the crew members disappear during a bar fight. Now, there were no shortage of conspiracy theorists advocating that Allen was actually a witness. But some also say that he might have been an alien that was channeling information from our world. There was also a theory that the Navy was secretly working with aliens, but of course, these claims are way too outlandish, even for the US military. Learning everything you just heard, could it all just be a lie? Edward Dudgeon, a crew member on the USS Edstrom, claimed that while the Navy was, yes, in fact experimenting with invisibility in 1943, they were not trying to make ships disappear. It was an operation to make the ships invisible to magnetic torpedoes by degaussing them. 
This involves wrapping the vessel in large cables and sending high voltages through the wires to scramble the ship's magnetic signature. Dudgeon said that the operation involved contract workers too, and that there were merchant ships around. That means any passerby might have heard the Navy personnel saying something about making the ship invisible and completely misunderstood. That definitely makes more sense than a destroyer ship becoming invisible and teleporting 200 miles away. The truth is, the Eldridge and the Eggstrom were harbored together, and the crews often socialized on shore. As for the disappearing crewmen in the bar fight, well, there's a perfectly simple explanation. No, really, there is. The fight broke out when one sailor started bragging about all of the secret equipment he was working with and was told to be quiet. And since Dudgeon and all of his mates were minors at the time, the waitress snuck them out the back when the fight started and later denied knowing about them to the authorities. But wait, how did so many people on board the U.S. Andrew Furuseth spot the ship in Virginia? According to Dudgeon, the ship Eldridge had already left at 11 p.m. Anyone looking at the harbor would see the ship wasn't there anymore. It was, in fact, spotted in Virginia, and it also did come back to Philadelphia Harbor the next morning, which seems like an impossible feat. Any merchant ship would have taken two days to make that trip. But the Navy, of course, has special access to certain channels, in this case, the Chesapeake-Delaware Canal, which could cut that trip down to only six hours. So there you have it, a perfectly reasonable explanation for all the claims made by Allen. Of course, this could all just be a cover-up. We all know the military sometimes gets up to some shady business. If they did try an invisibility experiment that backfired, they wouldn't exactly make it public news. So yes, the Navy absolutely denies any such nope. experiment was ever done. And yeah, people have followed up on it too and searches of the records in the operational archives have turned up no documentation concerning this experiment. The only thing investigators ever found while researching the code word rainbow was a document detailing how the US would defeat Germany, Italy, and Japan. While Albert Einstein was a part-time consultant for the Navy doing theoretical research on explosives, there was no proof that he was doing anything related to invisibility or teleportation. In fact, Einstein's unified field theory was never even completed, so the Navy never had any research to work from. So in reality, we lack any kind of evidence that would support the Philadelphia experiment. It could all just be a hoax created by Carl Allen, most likely a disturbed individual who created something that took on a life of its own. But what do you think? Could it all be a lie to cover up an experiment gone wrong? Or was there really nothing here? Let us know in the comment section. Now you're probably saying to yourself, Joey, what does this have to do with Wildwood? All your videos have something to do with Wildwood and Cape May County. How does this relate? Well, if you visit Mariner's Pier, you'll notice there's an attraction on the left-hand side called the Ghost Ship. Well, the background story behind that is that the Philadelphia Experiment ship didn't reappear in Philadelphia, but instead landed on the Wildwood beaches. That's why when you go inside, you see shipmates that are zombies and half fused together because of the history behind the Philadelphia Experiment. So I wanna know, do you think this experiment actually took place? And if you do, do you have any proof of it? Please let me know in the comment section. And I wanna thank you for joining me. And I wanna send a special thank you to everyone who's on our Patreon page. You too can get rewarded by supporting this channel. All you need to do is click the link in this description and check out the rewards. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you guys on the beach, which is somewhere, I think, like two hours down that way. Anyway, I'm Joey. Stay safe, everyone. See you later. Bye.